Our next speaker will inspire us on the power of authenticity. She is someone who played and still plays a pivotal role in my own success and the birth of Inspire Me. And due to her being her authentic self, it's allowed me to be my authentic self and start my journey as an entrepreneur and open Inspire Me this time last year. ICF Master Certified Coach Maria Kigley, Director and Co-Founder of Empower World, has over 22 years of international experience in coaching and training. It's an absolute honor to welcome her to the stage today. I never stop learning from her wisdom. Marie. I'm not sure I'm going to stand up to that introduction, Elizabeth. Thank you so much. I'm glad I'm in the right place because about half an hour ago I was standing in the W Hotel asking where the Doha Women's Forum was. So I'm just checking. You are here to learn about authenticity, right? Just show me a, a raise, raise your hands to show me. Fantastic. I am finally in the right place. Pay attention, Marie. Thank you to Conchita and her fabulous team for inviting me here today. I'm very excited to be with you. So let's see if this is working. Not moving. Do I have to do anything to move this? Great, thank you. Um, as um, Elizabeth said, I have a number of globally recognized certifications that are part of who I am, but really those, those, although I've worked hard to get them, they're really just a part of the human being that's standing in front of you today. I'm, as well as all that, I'm a, a wife and a mother of three amazing children. I'm a daughter, I'm the oldest of four children, I'm a friend, I love traveling, I've been an expat for eons, probably before some of you were born, and I've been through some amazing experiences in my life, and I've also been through some major challenges, and those scars and that beauty make me just like you, all of us who we are today. So let's talk about authenticity. Why on earth would I have a herd of raging buffaloes on the screen when I talk about authenticity? Well, come back with me 10 years ago as I was at a speaking event, trying to get on the stage. And in my imagination, all I could feel was it felt like there was a herd of raging buffaloes running towards me trying to kill me, and I wanted to turn on my heels and walk out the door. You see, I have a debilitating fear of public speaking. And 10 years ago, it kept turning me round and moving me out of the building. And when I finally moved through those raging buffaloes, that's what I believed you looked like. I believed you were all pointing your fingers at me, saying, who are you to stand up there? What's it, what have you got to say that's important? And you were laughing so loudly, it drowned me. And one day I did get past those raging buffaloes and stand on a crowd, probably of about 200 people, and I had a really important message to share that I was so passionate about sharing but this is what happened. My body shut down in total fear and I ended up passing out on the stage. How mortifying. I don't remember, but I was carried off the stage apparently and an ambulance called and I said, no, 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 I don't need an ambulance. I just need to do some work on myself. I just need to recognize where this fear is coming from. And they say, when the, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. And the teacher appeared in the form of my little girl. And as I was licking my wounds and feeling sorry for myself and thinking I'd never, ever get on stage again, 
I had to go and do my daily life of picking up my kids in school. And as I was picking her up from school, she wanted to bring a new friend that she'd made home for a play. So we agreed, and the new friend and the mum followed in their car, so we ended up getting to the house first. And I remember unlocking the front door and Tegan scooting on through, throwing her school bag down and bolting up towards the stairs. And I said, hang on, hang on a minute, Tegan. You need to pick your bag up. And she turned on the stairs and she looked at me and she said, Mom, I need to take this uniform off. They need to know who I really am. And it stopped me in my tracks. And I looked at her and I saw how confident she was in who she was. And I knew it was a lesson I needed to learn. I felt so emotional when she shared that with me. And also so proud. I still feel emotional when I think about it. And I was so proud of her. So she scooted on up the stairs, and a few minutes later, she, she sprang down in her purple tutu with her silver crown and silver slippers and opened the door to her friend. And I knew I had to tap into that kind of courage that we all come to the earth with. We all come to the earth through a difficult journey. It may be difficult for our mums, but it's also difficult for us. And we, when we land on this earth, we have a voice. And that voice, because we're all sitting and standing here in this room, that voice is really loud. We scream and we let people know that we have arrived. And it feels fantastic. And I've lost my pictures, so I'm just looking at my notes here. So I realized I needed to tap into that courage that I came on the earth with. A picture of me as a probably a one and a half year old many years ago. So when I knew I needed to tap into that courage, part of the work I do in supporting people to live an empowered life is to support them to recognize that how we speak to ourselves impacts our outcome in life. So I recognized that when I was standing there, the fear and the things that I was telling myself, the things that I was making up, I had to have a word with those gremlins and those saboteurs. You see, Tony Robbins, the great speaker, says, there are three core fears within all of us. The fear of not being enough, the fear of not belonging, and the fear of not being loved. And when it all boils down to it, our greatest fear is that we are not loved. And I recognize that my fear of not being loved on the stage, not even being liked on the stage, was having a big impact on the way I was speaking to myself. So I met my gremlins, we had long chats over long cups of coffee, and I, I asked them, because I recognize they, in, especially in the work I do with people, our gremlins originally come to support us, they come for a good purpose, and my gremlins came to keep me safe. They didn't want me to die, so they told me not to take risks. And I recognize that I have the remote control, just like we all do, of our lives. And we can choose to turn down the volume of the words that disempower us and turn up the words that do empower us. And so I began to practice self-love and self-compassion. And I say practice because those gremlins keep coming back. You heard me talk about the fact that my gremlins, our gremlins, a lot of the time, want to keep us safe and secure. 
And I recognized, again, through my own work and through the work of the hundreds of clients I work with, that when we're choosing to live with the values of safety and security, it stops us stepping out of that thing we call the comfort zone that we saw from one of the earlier speakers. So what are values? Our values are like our DNA. They're like our thumbprints. They run our lives. They help us make choices when decisions and challenges face us. And all of the choices I was making when I had safety and security at the top of my list was based in fear. So we all have these values running through our system, but each one of us is unique in the way we see them. So I knew that I had to shift safety and security down the ladder, and I had to bring up other values to support me to step up and do this work, because I know my purpose, and it's to, it's to support others. It's to be the light that shines for others to find their way home. And so to be my purpose, I had to change my value system. So instead of putting safety and security in the lamp that leads me through the darkness, I chose to put courage. And when I shifted that, things changed. And every time safety and security wanted to slip in, I would recognize courage is what's needed here. And when courage was in my lamp, it honored my other really two important values of growth and contribution. And so I kept getting brave, and I kept practicing, and I kept stepping up, using my values as the light that took me through the darkness. But still there was something missing. Still there was something that was holding me back and I'm certified in uh, Dr. Brené Brown's work. You may have heard her. She's an amazing author, Daring Greatly and Rising Strong. And I recognized that there was something in her work that I needed to go back and research. And I remember sitting in a room with her when she said some really important words that you said on the screen. Perfectionism is a way of thinking. If I look perfect, live perfect, and work perfect, I can avoid or minimize criticism, blame, and ridicule. Wow. That hit me. As a recovering perfectionist, that was a real lesson I needed to learn. Let me just clarify the difference between perfectionism and striving for excellence. Striving for excellence is being the best that we can be. It's internally motivated. Perfectionism is thinking, what do you think of me? And so I needed to work on letting go of perfectionism and cultivating a practice of being enough. So I practiced, and I practiced. And one thing I knew, know when we're being authentic is that we need to step into trust. Trust changes our reality. And the research, the neuroscience behind trust is that when we're in distrust with ourselves or anyone else, it lives in the old brain, the back of the brain, the limbic brain that causes amygdala hijack, that causes somebody to pass out on stage. But when we're in trust with ourselves, we're in the prefrontal cortex part of our brain. The brain that allows us to be calm, be present, see clarity. It also has amazing chemicals when we're in trust with ourselves of oxytocin, dopamine, and serotonin, the good feeling, uh, naturally occurring uh, drugs that connect us to other people. Whereas when I'm in distrust, 
there's cortisol running through my system and it takes 26 hours for cortisol to leave our system when we're in high stress or distrust. I believe over the last few minutes you'll have heard me say the word practice. 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 Well, that's because I believe authenticity is a daily practice, a conscious choice of how we want to live, a choice to be honest with ourselves, and a choice to let ourselves be seen. The heart of authenticity is the courage to be vulnerable. And that is courage. So the de debilitating fear of public speaking has gone. And still, I still get nervous because I value your time. And when I'm nervous, it means that I'm doing something special. So the question is, as I stand in here in authenticity, choosing courage, will you choose courage or comfort? That's all I have. Thank you.